Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line. Today's topic is choosing the right GDT tolerances. And today's question is I'm working on a drawing where I need to call out the position tolerance of a shaft on a support. My goal is to define the positional tolerance based on the 1.19 dimension, specifying that at maximum material condition of this dimension, the tolerance is at 0 0.010. As the support becomes smaller, I want the tolerance to increase accordingly. However, I want the part to be measured from the left side, which I've defined as datum A. Can someone confirm if this approach is correct or offer any suggestions for improvement? So let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing here. Now I've taken some liberties and redrawn this in SOLIDWORKS to make the image a little bit clearer, but nonetheless the dimensions and the images are the same. We saw on the submitted drawing that these two parts got welded together. Uh, and so we have a separate part here and a separate part here. And again, they're being welded together. We're going to make some assumptions that the piece part drawings for each of these components are fully defined in defining all the features of that individual part with respect to the other features on that individual part, which is why we'll see reference dimensions like this one here not have a size tolerance to it. We're going to go reference those previous drawings for any sizes and tolerances for that dimension. So again, we can utilize these reference dimensions here. We'll just have to reference the previous drawings if we need to utilize their size for anything like datum shift or bonus tolerances. So with that in mind, there's a couple of things to point out here on the sample drawing. We can't necessarily attach position to a basic dimension like we see here, uh, mostly because this isn't a feature of size. And so we can't assess the maximum material condition of this feature of size. Again, maximum material condition assumes that you're adding or subtracting material to the size itself. This is just simply the distance between a plane and an axis, and it doesn't really have size. It's more location. Again, um, when we get into the GDT fundamentals course, we kind of point out the, the inherent ambiguity or flaws in these sort of dimensioning methods. And so we'll see that in the next example, we'll shift the focus here. But the goal of this drawing is to basically locate this part with respect to this part. And obviously we can see that this part can slide up and down this shaft. So we need some sort of location, right? And so in order to accomplish locating these two features or these two parts with respect to each other, we can consider a sort of makeup that looks like this. Now we're utilizing this feature right here, this feature of size as datum feature B. We've dropped off datum A because datum A was never really referenced in the submitted example. We're going to identify and use B in these first couple examples as our sole primary datum, right? And so we see that we have datum feature B, which is this width of 1.19. Now, if we want to control this support with respect to the shaft, uh, we can see that we can do that using position on the diameter of our shaft. Again, the diameter of the shaft, or sorry, the support is going to be referenced because that size of the diameter of that support is going to be on the piece part drawing. But nonetheless, we can still use that size to locate this feature of size with respect to this feature of size. And so we're doing that with position. And we can see that if we have a part here, we're controlling the axis of this support, right? So we're controlling the axis of the support to a diametric tolerance zone of 10 thousandths. And that diametric tolerance zone has a location, right? We're trying to control the position. That location is with respect to the datum referenced, right? So the datum reference is datum feature B. And so we can see that we are referencing that mid plane of our datum feature B. So when we reference it in this method, it's not referencing this left side as our datum, it's in line with this dimension here. And so we create a feature of size datum feature, and that gives us a datum mid plane. So our datum mid plane is right down the middle of the part, and we know that 0.115 inches away from our datum mid plane is exactly where this axis needs to be. So Wherever we go with this, we know we are locating these two parts with respect to each other. Now to simulate datum B, we would have two parallel planes uh, that are sitting at the MMB condition. In other words, the largest condition, it's the MMB boundary. And that's what we're referencing here. We're saying at MMB, uh, this is your setup. And so we get a little bit of datum shift if this part comes in small. So let's say this datum feature B comes in a little bit small, right? Still within our size dimensions defined by that piece part drawing. But if it does come in a little bit small, we get to shift inside this MMB boundary. And if our axis is outside of its tolerance zone with respect to the datum mid plane, again, that datum mid plane is the center of these two surfaces. If we can't get this inside the tolerance, what we get to do is have a little bit of datum shift. 
And so we can shift our datum feature, which is these two planes here on our datum feature, off center from our datum. And again, our datum is still the center of that MMB boundary. And we get to shift this over, and that's called datum shift. So we see that if the datum feature comes in a little bit small, we can shift to be intolerance here. But you'll notice you're not measuring with respect to this left side as the question stated. So if that was the goal, what we can accomplish here is utilize this surface as datum B. And now you'll notice the datum feature symbol is off away from this dimension. It's not in line with it. So we are associating datum B to datum feature B, which is over here, this left surface. And now we are locating the axis of this feature with respect to that plane over here. And so we can see we'd have a diametric tolerance zone that is 0 0.480 inches away from datum plane B. And again, datum plane B is from datum feature B over there on the left. But you'll notice this has nothing to do with the size of our datum feature. Now we could also apply some bonus tolerance here. We could put the MMC modifier next to this value right here and say that if this came in a little bit smaller, we could have bonus tolerance in addition to the 0 0.010. So that's another opportunity or another way to control the location of this part with respect to this part. And you're utilizing this end here to control the location of the axis of our support. And again, if you would like to include bonus tolerance, put that MMC modifier next to that position tolerance there. One other opportunity would be use profile of a surface to locate this surface with respect to this post. Now you'll notice we have identified datum feature A as the bottom surface of our support and datum feature B as the axis of that support. And so now we can sort of define the zero uh, where we want this surface to be located from. And so we can see that we are perpendicular to A and located to B with this tolerance zone. And the width of this tolerance zone is 10 thousandths. So we're basically controlling the location of this surface with respect to this datum axis and the orientation with respect to datum A to plus or minus five thousands. And so we can check and make sure that surface is within our tolerance zone of 10 thousands profile. So that not only controls orientation, but it also controls the location left and right and the form. So our surface can look a little like this. And as long as it's inside this zone that is located and orientated to A and B using basic dimensions, uh, we see that we've passed our profile tolerance. So this is another really direct way of controlling the location of these two features with respect to each other. But again, you'll notice you're not controlling the location of this surface down here. What would control that is an understanding of on the piece part drawing for this shaft, what located this surface with respect to this surface that would be a bit of a tolerance analysis we could understand. Now, one last example here is we could control the position of our width feature, which is the length of our post, creating a midplane. So we could create a midplane from this feature of size. And then we can control the position of that midplane to A and B. And you'll notice we have A and B defined just like we saw in the previous example, creating a zero from our support. If we have a zero created from the support part, we could see that we can control the midplane of our feature of size to a tolerance zone whose width is 0 0.010. And we could also apply bonus tolerance to that as well. So if this came in a little bit small, right, we could have more position error on that midplane, basically allowing it to deviate up to a certain boundary given bonus tolerance. So if it came in really wide, we don't want to give it any more than this position. But if it came in a little bit small, we can give it a little bit more bonus based on this MMC modifier. So a lot of ways to handle the location of these two features, these two parts, with respect to each other. And again, the goal of GDT should be centered around the functional intent. So hopefully this opens your eyes to all of the options you have as a designer and helps you uh, make the best decision moving forward. So thanks for submitting. Have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. 
Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles.